All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, and today we're working on a John Deere 820. It's my own tractor. We used it for raking hay to working in the wood lot to brush hogging. But the last couple of years, the hydraulic pump has been getting weaker and weaker. And this year, we wanted to put the four port system on this so that it could pull the speed rake, which covers 28 foot of ground at a time. So I went ahead and I ordered a brand new pump. We had, I've got a rebuilt one here that we rebuilt, have it ready to go, but it won't fit this particular tractor. It'll only fit the other two John Deere's that I have. So the idea is we, we're going to take the pump out and replace it with a brand new pump. And in order to do so, the first thing that we have to do is get that air filter out or that air cleaner container out of the way so we can gain access to the tractor itself. Now she's down here for a complete overhaul. We've got, I bought a donor tractor that's got brand new rear tires on it, so we're gonna swap rims and tires. It's got, uh, the pump is different, so we can't use that. We're gonna put the four port remote system on this, the Summit, that was on the 2640. But a lot of this work is a one-man job because you're right in the way of each other when you try and do it. So Claude starts working on that side. And then as we progress, we'll start working on both sides of it. I don't know if you guys have any interest in this or not, but I figured I'd just throw it out there that this is just part of the what we do in the shop. The nice thing with being a farmer and owning your own shop and doing your, is the ability to do your own work and our local John Deere dealership charges 120 bucks an hour to replace that pump plus the price of the pump and the pump was over a thousand dollars through John Deere and I was able to find it for just under three with tax on eBay so we got the air filter box all taken out so it exposes the pump it's right there in the front now when these here they come with two different models the problem we're having right off the bat with Claude's got the wrenches is the center is trying to turn on the block but for the John Deere 820, you had two different pumps. One was if it had power steering and the other if it didn't. Mine has power steering, so I had to have the two block system. And you basically, you have pressure going out and then you have a return. And Claude is working on the pressure out to the hydraulic system and to the power steering system. And then the big pipe that's on this side is a return that feeds both the front and the, the back of the pump. You actually kind of got like two pumps in there. You know, I mentioned the other day in the video that one of the things that I, I don't like about YouTube, some of these guys, is that they, they don't show the grunt work of what you have to do to get ready for it. And this is actually how it looks. You know, you're going to get dirty. There's hydraulic fluid involved. And it was a lot dirtier than that until Claude took the air hose to it. But we need to get those hydraulic lines off and the port system on this side because with the pump those blocks do not come with the pump we have to reuse our own blocks right now Claude's trying to get that hydraulic line out of the way so that he can get access to the front one there's bolts in there that he can't get to to take them out
what I'm trying to do is keeping it real with our videos is I'm going to show you our mistakes. I'm going to show you what it actually looks like and where you can go wrong in a hurry or where you can save time. I think it's important that you show everything, not just a quick in and out, easy peasy, all done. And then the poor guy that watched the video hasn't learned a thing. Or learned enough to get himself into trouble. With the front hydraulic pressure line going out, he's trying to take the bolts out of the block because it's trying to turn inside the block. And we don't want to have it snap off in the block or we're going to be buying a new block or a new fitting to the block if we can get it out. But if we can get those bolts out of the way, we can can get a wrench on to that internal nut that Claude is on what well, was on just a minute ago I'm going to start on this side taking this block off this is the return side and the return side feeds both the front power steering and the back the major hydraulic pump The biggest thing is remembering how you take it apart so that when you put it back together, you know exactly where everything goes. As you can see with me, I don't wear gloves. I, I, I don't have much feeling anyway, so that if I put a pair of gloves on, it just feels bulky. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. But the goal is, while it's in between, I bring my stuff down to get it ready for the summer for haying season and do miscellaneous jobs that I put off throughout the winter because most of the time through the winter I only run one tractor and that's the Deutz to feed the cows and stuff and I keep the 2240 out so if I have issues with starting the Deutz at below zero weather the 2240 will start there's no cab but it's better they're not feeding them at all. But if you're new to this and you haven't done it before and you're going to start doing something like this, I suggest you get a table laid out and do like I, I tell you to do with the carburetors. The first piece you take off, put the farthest away and work your way back. And that way... When you go back together, you could just go the opposite direction and know that where every part goes. This is going to be a couple part series because we're running out of time here. We got to do some deliveries of lawnmowers that customers are going to expecting them. And then we have a gator we have to drop off to a customer. But the main thing I wanted to accomplish today with this was let's get the stuff out of the way and let's start getting it where we can pull the pump Monday. Because today's Saturday when I'm editing the video. The hydraulic pump came last night UPS so I have it sitting right here and I looked at it and it is the exact twin to the one that we're working on so... Now, with this side of the block, you have to be kind of careful because there are O-rings in behind that.
And what we did was we put a pail underneath the, the tractor. There's a weep hole in the bottom that we blew all out. So any oil that's coming is going down that weep hole into a five-gallon bucket. Claude's still trying to get that lower block out on the pressure side to the hydraulic pump. I would say my biggest suggestion to you is don't get in a hurry. When you get into a hurry, you end up breaking things or, you know, things just go south in a hurry, as they all say. But see, now he has access to that inner nut to put the wrench on it and be able to turn the hydraulic line off. Alright, so we're just finishing up here. We're going to try taking the mounting bolts and get them out of the way, but for the most part, we're done with this for the day so that it's all ready to pull on Monday. My biggest advice to you if you're doing this, you're a do it yourselfer, take your time, you know, and I'm going to try to show you as much as possible so that it's not going to be one of those easy peasy videos. You're going to come up against things that you have to do workarounds on. And some of these don't want to break free that well. You can use the double wrench technique. So on that note, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you. And keep the comments, shares, and likes coming we greatly appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe